All right. Hi, uh, hello, everyone. Bless you. God bless you as you're joining us. Praise God. I uh, just wanted to share a quick word with us this evening, uh, entitled Christ, the reason for the season. Hallelujah. Blessed be God. And um, for those of us who are going to be celebrating Christmas uh, over this period, it's just good for us to refocus our minds and just, you know, remember why we're celebrating and why we're having our Christmas turkeys and Christmas dinners and uh, opening our presents on Boxing Day, just to realize, you know, the reason why we're actually celebrating this season. So I'm just going to, um, before I kick off, I'm just going to share a quick word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you uh, for this awesome opportunity to share your word. Thank you for everyone who is joining us. Um, by internet thank you for those who are listening those who will listen after this we bless them and we ask that you bless and encourage them with this word empower them lord by your spirit in the mighty name of jesus give them grace wisdom and understanding through this word in jesus mighty name amen so uh we're just going to share a quick word um titled christ the reason for the season and uh, we're going to read a quick scripture from isaiah the book of isaiah chapter 9 I'm going to read from verse 6. I'm reading from the, New, from the King James Version. It says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Hallelujah. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Glory be to God. So, in this scripture is very key. Um, it's talking about the the introducing us, Isaiah prophesied and introducing us to the Messiah, the Christ who was to be born. And um, let's read the birth of Jesus Christ from the book of Luke. Um, let's look at Luke chapter 1. Let's look at the birth of Jesus Christ. Luke chapter, all right, let's read from chapter 2. And the Bible says, Luke chapter 2. Read from verse 6. And it was so that while the days were accomplished that she should be delivered, and she brought forth her first son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were sore afraid. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto us is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall see the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, and suddenly... There was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made known and brought the same which was told them concerning this child. And all that heard it wondered as those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So the shepherds returned to Jerusalem and noise that brought the things that were shared or told all to them regarding the birth of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So, Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem, according to the prophecies that was given concerning him. 
Hallelujah. And, um, you know, Christ had been prophesied from, you know, from time immemorial, you know, prophets have prophesied, and even from the when, when Adam first sinned, the, Jesus, God himself was the first one to prophesy that a Messiah, someone would be born who would redeem man from their sins, you know, and um, glory be to God. So, all right, sorry, Allison, I think I was um, toying with the system there. So, I hope it's better now. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So, the reason why Jesus was born, we need to understand the reason why he was born. And um, while we're enjoying our Christmas dinners and enjoying everything that we're, you know, the Christmas season, enjoying our holidays, um, meeting up with families, opening our presents, we need to go back to the reason why Jesus had to be born. Why was Jesus Christ born at all? What was the whole point? You know, Christmas is an awesome, awesome season, awesome time of celebration where the whole world actually celebrates the birth of Jesus Christ. Now, you know, many people who don't know Jesus are actually celebrating his birth without actually knowing what they are celebrating or why they are celebrating at all. And I think it's important for us as Christians to always remind the world of the significance of the birth of Jesus Christ. Why was he born? What was the reason why he was born? You know, the Bible says something in Romans chapter 3, it says, For all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. The reason why Jesus Christ had to die was because man had sinned and had fallen short of God's glory. The original intent for man, in, if you read the book of Genesis, God said, let us make man in our own image and in our own likeness. But when Adam sinned and fell short of God's glory, you know, he forfeited his position. He forfeited his, his um, relationship with God and sin cut him off from God. And because he sinned and fell short of God's glory, every other man that was born after him was in the same mess. Everybody was in the same position. They have all fallen short of God's glory. And Jesus, when he came to die and resurrect, the key aim was to restore us back to that position of dominion and of glory, to the position that we lost when Adam fell. Now, um, when, when we get born again or we receive Jesus into our lives, the sin nature, the sin nature of man, you know, that which is within man that separates him from God, that which is within man that makes him always want to tend towards sin, that nature within us that is not God's nature, the nature of the devil that was introduced to man at the fall is taken away and will receive a new nature. Hallelujah. We become one with Christ. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The Bible says, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We become new creations in Christ Jesus. That is the reason for the season. Jesus is the reason for the season. This is the reason why Jesus had to die. He had to die because man could not pay the price. You know, the Bible says, um, without the shedding of blood, there shall be no remission of sins. Without the shedding of blood, there shall be no remission of sins. And all through um, Moses' um, sacrifice or Moses, the Mosaic Covenant, when he made, which he made with Israelites in the, in the wilderness, those sacrifices was made as an atonement for their sin, to cover their sin so that God would be able to bless them. So all through the Bible, we could see that the sacrifice or you know the sacrificial system was instigated by God so that man could be able to come to God or be able to approach God. Hallelujah. But in those sacrifices, there was still, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, that there was still a remembrance of sin. In all those sacrifices that was made, there was still the remembrance of sin. So the sin problem hadn't been taken away. So even if they made all the sacrifices, the problem of sin was still there. So God was still seeing the sin. But the, the sacrifice covered it and he could bless them and they could approach him. But when Jesus came, the Bible calls him the perfect sacrifice. The, the lamb without spot nor blemish. The perfect sacrifice. When the perfect sacrifice was made, when Jesus Christ shed his own blood, on Calvary's cross to atone, not just to atone, but to remit and to destroy the, the, the sin that was separating man from God. He destroyed the power of sin. He destroyed the, 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 the dividing wall that was between men and God. He removed it out of its place. He destroyed the power of the law that was keeping men in bondage to sin. Hallelujah. But the Bible says without the law, sin has no effect or sin is, sin is powerless without the, the effect of the law. So Jesus Christ died so as to remove the nature of sin. That's the key point. 
And his death is not just that. He didn't just remove the nature of sin from us. He gave us something else. Hallelujah. He put something else in its place. The Bible says he took out the old that he may bring in the new. He took out the old wineskin that he may bring in the new. He took out the old nature that he may bring in the new nature of God. Hallelujah. He took out the nature of sin that he may bring in the nature of righteousness. The nature of righteousness. So we, we don't have a sin nature anymore. So if you are born again, if you're a child of God, if you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, of your soul, you have received the nature of God. You have received the righteousness, the righteous nature of God. Now, you didn't earn this. This is something you don't, you don't earn it. You received it by grace. The Bible says, by grace are you saved through faith. And that is the gift of God. It's not a worst list, list any man should boast. It is the gift of God given to all men freely that you may receive the, the, the sacrifice, receive the benefit of eternal life freely received. Hallelujah. And freely you give it out to other people. Glory be to God. So, we receive the nature of God. Now, when you receive the nature of God, does it mean you, don't, you, you cannot make a mistake? Does it mean you're now totally perfect and sinless? You never make a mistake? No, you, can, you, 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 you may make mistakes even as being a child of God, but we don't dwell on our mistakes. We, we depend on the righteous nature of God to keep us right. Our, our righteousness is not of ourselves. So, you know, we, we don't depend on our own good works. We don't depend on our own righteous acts to, keep, to make us accepted before God. So, we don't depend on our righteous acts. We depend on the righteousness of God. That is why, that is how you can approach God. You don't approach God on your own good works. You don't approach God on your own merit. No, you approach God because of the works of Jesus. Because what Jesus has done, he's paid the price, paid the perfect sacrifice that you and I can be saved. Glory be to God. And that is the reason for the season. That is the reason why Jesus had to die. He died because of the sin nature of man. He died to restore us back to righteousness. To restore us back to our pre-Adamic state. To restore us back to the relationship we had with God before Adam sinned. Hallelujah. So you now have access. The Bible says we have access by grace, into this, by, by faith into this grace where we stand. We have access to the throne room of God. Glory be to God. The Bible says that we should come boldly before the throne throne of God and obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Welcome, Elohim. God bless you. So, this is the reason for the season. Jesus is the reason for the season. So, while you're enjoying your Christmas turkey, enjoying your, your, you know, your holidays, meeting family, opening presents, always remember, teach your kids, you know, tell your kids, Jesus is the reason for the season. It's not Santa, you know, with, you know, Coca-Cola has done a great job of promoting Santa and all that kind of stuff. But that's not the reason for the season. The real reason for the season is Jesus. So while the whole world is celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, may we never forget, may we always remember why he died. And may we also remember the, the great price he paid. It's not a, it's not a cheap price, he paid a very expensive price for your salvation and for my salvation. So wherever you are, as a believer, you have a, you have a responsibility to those around you to remind them why they are celebrating. So always remind them, Jesus is the reason for the season. It's actually the best time to preach to people. It's not preaching at people, but just reminding them, do you know why you're celebrating Christmas? Do you know the reason why the whole point of Christmas has been celebrated? You know, just remind them. Because most people don't get it, especially unbelievers. They don't know why they're celebrating Christmas. They just you know, think it's the time of get, you know, to get drunk or to you know, go for parties or whatever it is. No, this is a time to reflect on the great privilege we have of being children of God, of being included in the family of God. Hallelujah. God paid a Jesus paid the price for your sin. He paid the price for my sin so that we may be included into the family of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. What an awesome privilege. What does it mean to be in the family of God? What does it mean to be a, a part of the body of Christ? Glory be to God. You have the same rights. <laughs> you have the same rights and privileges that Jesus Christ has today. It's an awesome privilege. You have the same rights as a son of God. The same right that Jesus Christ has today. You have the same inheritance that Jesus Christ has today. That's an awesome, awesome privilege. So as a son and a daughter of God, you are in the same category as Christ. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. You have the same authority. You have the same power. The Bible says the same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you. Glory be to God. That's an 
awesome, awesome truth. If we can grab that truth with our, with our spirit to realize the same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you and I as believers, we have the same authority in the name of Jesus. Now, the authority is invested in that name. Now, when you say that name with authority, with understanding, with conviction, in knowing who you are as a child of God, that at that name, the Bible says, demons shall tremble. At that name, every knee shall bow, of beings in heaven, beings on earth, beings under the earth. Sickness and disease bow to that name. You know, temptations, tests and trials, they bow to the, at the mention of that name. Because at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee, the Bible says, shall bow. So this is the privilege you have as a child of God. This is the privilege I have as a child of God, that we have power in the name of Jesus. We have authority invested in that name. The Bible says that name is, has power in heaven. That name has power on the earth. That name has power under the earth. When you say that name, angels listen. Glory be to God. The angels are at attention, waiting for your next command. The Bible says the angels of God, they hasten to at the word of his command. And when you speak, it's as good as God speaking. For the Bible says, God said, I will put my words in your mouth. So that when you speak those words, it's as good as God speaking those words himself. Glory be to God. So when you meditate on the scriptures, Soak yourself in the word. Believe that every promise. The Bible says all promises of God in him are yeah and amen. Every single promise God has made concerning you is amen. God backs it up. When God says you are blessed, hallelujah, you decree by faith, I'm blessed in Jesus' name. When God says you are the head and never the tail, you decree by faith, I'm the head and never the tail. When God says you are above and never beneath, hallelujah, you are above and never beneath. You shall lend to nations, you shall not borrow. You are, you are the blessed of God. You are the favored of God. The Bible says by his stripes you were healed. You decree by his stripes, I was healed. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Sickness and disease cannot dwell or abide in my mortal body. Glory be God. Because the Bible says, if the spirit of him that raised up Christ from dead dwell in me, that same spirit shall give life. That spirit shall give healing virtue to my mortal body. Glory be to God. You go out there, minister life to people. You have the life of God. That's one of the great things we received when we received Jesus. The Bible says, in him was life and the life was the light of men. That life was what you received when you came into Jesus. Hallelujah. God came to give life to everyone that would believe. The Bible says, you know, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So you have eternal life as a child of God. You have the life of God, the zoe nature of God. The nature of God is on the inside of you. The life of God is on the inside of you. You need to use that life. You need to manifest that life. Glory be to God. How do you release that life? By, by speaking words. You can speak words of life. Glory be to God. The Bible says, let your words be seasoned with salt that it may impart grace upon the hearers. When you speak words of life, people receive life. Hallelujah. When you lay hands on the sick, life is transferred from your body, from your spirit. Now, it doesn't come from your body. It comes out of your spirit. The Bible said, Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. That life flows out of your spirit. By faith, you believe that when I lay hands on the sick, they recover in Jesus' name. When I speak words of life, life flows out. Death and life the Bible says it's the power of the tongue. When I speak words, you can either speak words of life or you can speak words that produce death. So it depends on what you're saying. But when you, when you, you speak somebody, to somebody who is sick, you can speak words of life, of healing into their body and they'll be healed in Jesus' name. When you speak words of life, people receive life. When you speak words of healing, people receive healing. When you speak words of blessing, people receive blessing. Hallelujah. You know, with your words, you can bless and with the same words, you can curse people. But God has not given us the, God doesn't want us to work in those kind of, um, in the wrong side of it, but wants us to work in the life side of it. Hallelujah. Speaking life to people. Speaking life to situations. Speaking life to your destiny. Speak life over your job. Speak life over your family. Speak life over your children. Now the key is this. Even if what, what you're seeing physically is not what you want. Hallelujah. Maybe in your business, maybe in your marriage, maybe over your children, you are seeing certain traits that you don't want. Don't confirm or don't affirm or don't speak those words. Don't speak the negative words. You know, it may, in the physical, it may not be working. Doesn't matter. Just speak what you want to see. Hallelujah. The Bible says, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be that moved, be that cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. So begin to speak words that you want to see to come to pass. Begin to speak words of life. 
Speak words of healing and health over yourself, over your children, over your business, hallelujah, over your family, glory be to God. And in this season of love, just spread the love of God, glory be to God. Minister life to people, minister love to people, glory be to God. And you will see people being changed. Anyone that comes around you would notice the difference that you are someone who brings light, who brings love, who brings encouragement, hallelujah. You are the person they want to come around with, hallelujah. Now, another key I'll tell you is this. Don't respond or don't react to what people do. Hallelujah. So when you see somebody walking negatively towards you or walking in hatred or variance or whatever it is towards you, they don't like you. Forget, forget it. It doesn't matter. You love them anyway. Hallelujah. You minister life to them. You show them a better way. Hallelujah. doesn't matter how they treat you. It's how you treat them that matters. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'll say that again. It doesn't matter how people treat you. It matters or it's more important how you treat them because that's what God is concerned about. He's he's concerned about how, how you respond. Now, Jesus Christ never reacted to the devil. He always lived his life in response to the Father. So the same way you don't live in reaction to the devil. So when the devil is doing something, you start, you, you start panicking, you start doing stuff. No, just live in response to the Father. Trusting in him, glory be to God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledging him and he shall direct your path. Glory be to God. So Jesus is the reason for the season. Hallelujah. Jesus is the reason why we're celebrating Christmas. He's the reason why we're celebrating and we're rejoicing this season. So wherever you go, be an ambassador for Christ. Be an ambassador telling people the good news of salvation. Tell them the inheritance which we have in Christ Jesus. Tell them the reason why they're celebrating this season. The reason is Jesus. Glory be to God. He's, he's the reason why you are celebrating. He's the reason why I'm celebrating. And also in this time of love and of fellowship and of family and of union, call people you've never called in a long time. You know, the Lord will remind you of people that you need, to, you need to pray for, you need to speak to, you need to visit. You know, spend time out, visit people, call them, encourage them, be a blessing to people around you. And just, you know, be the light in the darkness. Hallelujah. Don't complain about the darkness. Don't complain about, you know, the wickedness in the world. You be the light in the darkness. You go out there and be a light. You go out there and be an example of the believer. The Bible says in word, in conduct, in faith, in purity, in holiness, you are the one God is looking up to. You are God's weapon of war. You are God's battle axe. You are God's choice for this season. Hallelujah. So you and I have a responsibility to let people know the reason for the season is Jesus. Hallelujah. And you are an ambassador for Christ because you are, the, you are the representative of Christ. You are the Christ people are going to see in the earth. Unbelievers may not know Jesus. They may not have, never have heard of him, but they see you. So when they see you, let your life manifest the life of Christ. Let your life manifest how Christ would be. If Christ was on the earth today, how would he be? How would he look? How would he, how would he speak? How would he dress? How would he address people? Hallelujah. What would be his character? That should be your, your aim, is to represent Christ as though Jesus Christ was right here physically on the earth. But he is in you, hallelujah. So Bible says Christ lives in you. The life I live and I live, I live by faith. It's no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. So Jesus Christ is living his life through me. As I step out on the street, Christ steps out on the street. Glory be to God. So when you have this mindset, spend time in the word, meditate upon things like this. Think about Christ in you, the hope of glory. Think about the life of God that is flowing through you. Think about being the light in the darkness. Think about being you being the salt in the in, in the earth. Hallelujah. Because Jesus Christ depends on you. The heaven is depending on you. So speak the right words. You know, go out there, minister life to people. Lay hands on people if you have to. Encourage one another. Let's pray for one another. If you see someone who is who is living in sin or someone, a brother or sister who is struggling with one thing or another, rather than speaking negative words or encouraging the gossip, you know, rather just pray for them. Glory be to God. Encourage them when you see them. Hallelujah. Tell them that they can make, you know, they can live the Christian life because that's not who they are. Who they are is written in the word and they are the life of God. They are the light in the darkness. So they are, they are manifesting what they're manifesting is not in according to their nature. Their nature is the nature of Christ. Hallelujah. They don't have a sin, sin nature. They just have a sin habit that they need to kick by the power of the Holy Spirit. You pray with them, encourage them, and just let's, let's minister life one to another. So I want to bless you for, this, um, for taking this time to listen to this word. Share this message with someone you love. And uh, let's let everyone know why that Jesus Christ is the reason for the season. Hallelujah. But I want to pray before I go. I want to pray for every one of us on this call. Um, whatever your need is, right now, let's trust God. The Bible says if two of us 
shall agree on earth as touching anything that we shall ask. It shall be granted by our Father who is in heaven. So, whatever that need is, right now, I don't know what it is, but God knows and you know. Let's agree. M myself, you and God are in agreement over this thing. Whatever it is. It might be your family. It might be your job. It might be your, your kids. It might be your marriage. It might be finances. It might be a new job you're looking for. Whatever it is you're looking for right now, let's believe God together. If you want to write it down, write it down. Let's talk about it. If not, you know God knows and I'm going to agree with you in prayer. That this, before the year ends, before the year ends, before the 31st of December, I'm in agreement with you that you're going to hear something miraculous. You're going to hear a turnaround. You see a turnaround in that situation. You're going to see a miracle. A, a Christmas miracle is going to happen for you. Before the new year comes, God is going to come through for you. I'm going to release the angels of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says angels are ministering spirits sent forth to minister for us who are the heirs of salvation. So we're going to release angels to go on our behalf to bring your request, to bring your Christmas miracle. The same way the angels announced the birth of Jesus, the same way the angels are going to announce your miracle, your deliverance, your prosperity, your safety, your healing, whatever you need, you need to believe in God for. Right now, let's pray and let's trust God in Jesus' name. Right now, in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for my brother, my sister, um, whoever it is right now in agreement with me. I just pray for them, whatever the need may be. Right now, Father, you know what, what that need is that they're believing you for. For those who are in need of healing, right now, there's power in the name of Jesus. I command every sickness, every disease to leave their bodies now in Jesus' name. I release the healing virtue of God. I release the power of God into their spirit, into their bodies right now to drive out Every sickness, every disease, every infirmity in Jesus' name. For those who are in affliction by the, uh, by, you know, from the enemy, through demonic affliction, through spirits of infirmity, through spirits of pain, or whatever it is right now, by virtue of listening to this broadcast, I command every spirit of infirmity, every spirit of pain and affliction to go from them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. For those who will need miracles in their finances, miracles in their marriage, need a miracle in your, in your business, in your family, your children, whatever it is. I just feel there's someone, you've got a child who's got some kind of learning disorder and I just pray right now in Jesus' name, there is power in the name of Jesus. And I command that learning disorder to Come out in Jesus' name. I command a restoration of the memory of that child. I command a restoration of the brain function. That whatever needs to be corrected right now by power in the name of Jesus. I command a restoration of function in that, me in that mind, in that memory, in that brain. In Jesus' mighty name. I release life into that child and I command that child totally healed and restored in Jesus' mighty name. For those who are going through marital issues, um, going through you know relationship issues right now in Jesus' name. Someone is saying, you know, my husband doesn't stay home. He doesn't come back. He comes home late or, you know, he sleeps outside or whatever it is right now. In the name of Jesus, I command the restoration of that marriage. Whatever it is, the enemy is used to attract this person out of the home. I command a break in that thing right now in the name of Jesus. I lay claim to that, that man's salvation and to that home and to that marriage. I release the peace of God into that marriage. I release the love of God into that marriage in the mighty name of Jesus, that there'll be peace in that home. Hallelujah. There'll be no more striving, no more quarreling, no more, no more backbiting, whatever it is. I command every attack, every, every manipulation from the pit of darkness about that marriage to stop now in Jesus' name. Right now. Thank you, Father, for restoration of a marriage in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Lord, I bless you for finances. For those who are trusting you for finances right now, we release finances in the name of Jesus. We commission angels of an assignment right now to go and cause the finance to come. Whatever monies you need to be released to you right now to fulfill that project, to make to make those bills, being to pay those bills, whatever it is right now, Father, I release it in the spirit in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for the angels on assignment that are making it happen right now in Jesus' name. Father, we bless you and we thank you. Even for this time of fellowship and of, you know, talking about your word, Lord. Encourage everyone. Bless everyone that's listened. And may you come to bless them even as we go and share Christmas um, over this coming few days. Thank you, Father, for the Christmas holidays and our families that may be traveling from far and wide. We pray for journey mercies for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be God. Hallelujah. I've been encouraged by this word and edified, so I believe that you, you have as well. So share this word. Um, let your friends know who is the reason for the season. Jesus Christ is the reason for the
the season. Hallelujah. So God bless you guys. Thanks everyone for joining in. And um, until next week, so have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas and a, and a happy new year. Bless you guys. Amen.